You're now listening to the Wandering Buffalo Podcast with your hosts, Andrew Chang and Justin Goddard. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Wandering Buffalo Podcast. My name is Andrew Chang, and alongside me is my co-host, Justin Goddard. Tonight, we are going to dive into the combine results and do some mock drafts. And I'm not talking about the NFL combine, but the average Joe's Let's go. combine. And you can find this video on YouTube and Facebook and our social media page. It's going to be a hoot. Definitely check it out. Speaking of which, you can find us on social media, podcasting platforms, and even on YouTube by searching The Wandering Buffalo Podcast. I'm so excited to talk about our results and what we think the Bills can do in the 2021 draft. So let's break down the agenda. But as always, Justin, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing great tonight, my friend. Thank you. Um, very excited for this episode. Um, you know how much I love the draft. And the Combine episode is kind of like something I've always wanted to do in my life. And just putting it together and seeing it come together, you know, seeing the results were interesting. I'm just very excited for this show tonight. How you doing? I'm doing great. I, I would agree with you. I, I know you're excited for this episode. So for those of you who don't know, Justin is pretty much the big mock a draft guy out of out of me and him and our I have a problem Jake. He, he's good. He's good. You can find him uh, on the mock draft machines on most websites. But let's break down tonight's episode. We're going to highlight some bills related news, go over our combine results. And then Justin and I are going to present our mock drafts results and kind of dissect them and kind of describe why we did what we did in each mock draft. But first, let's talk about the Bills-related news. The Bills have signed Forrest Lamp. I think I really like this pickup, Justin. There's legit no risk to it. He was a former really high second-round pick for the Chargers. Although injuries did hold him back, which is unfortunate, if he works out, we got a steal. Like, a really good steal. And at worst case scenario, it's more interior offensive line competition, which I'm all about. So, Justin, how do you feel about Forrest Lamp? Yeah, I, I also love this pickup. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe he was a 38th overall pick um, by the Chargers. So, I'm I'm kind of looking at this as like... If the Bills were to cast off Cody Ford right now and another team picked him up, like, similar situation, you know, it's very low risk on it. Um, he was projected to be a good player in the re- in the league for a reason. Um, dude has some great athleticism. And, you know, worst case scenario, he doesn't live up to, to his billing and we let him go. Um, but I'm kind of looking at this as kind of like the Daryl Williams move. Or he battled injuries. By the time he got back, it was kind of like they'd already moved on. And, you know, just to change the scenery somewhere with some players that are better around him, I think this guy has a, a chance to push to start. Right. Moving on, Dean Marlowe is no longer a Buffalo Bill. I alluded to this on last week's episode that we were thin at safety. And now that he's gone... We seriously need someone behind Poyer and Hyde. I, I don't really know how you feel about that, Justin. Yeah, I I believe last week I predicted that Marlowe would be back. He's played with McDermott for McDermott for like the last five, six years. Yeah. I kind of figured he was going to keep chugging along. But yeah, I, I thought we were thin at safety before this for sure. Uh, I kind of figured he was going to be back, so that was something I was keeping in my back pocket. Um, Mm -hmm. But I think we're kind of in the position now where we're probably looking to add uh, at least one veteran, one guy through the draft. So had I seen this before, it might have kind of swung the pendulum on where I would look at a safety in the draft, but I think it's becoming a more pressing need to look at as well. Yeah, I would agree with you. I did not foresee this coming when I was doing my mock draft so uh, our results might be a little skewed at the point last two points the refs have come forward and said you know what we shouldn't have called that blindside block on Cody Ford during that Houston wildcard game 
and the Bills have released their 2021 draft hat. So I'm going to start first with this Cody Ford point. I get it, Bills fans, but at the end of the day, I I don't feel right looking at that penalty and going like that. That's it. That's why we lost that game. We had a, like a 16 point lead at at one point going into the third I'm pretty sure and we had two guys bounce off Deshaun Watson we we had that game and I I don't know I just can't look at that penalty and go like that's why we lost like and not to mention yeah we could have gotten in field goal range but Hoshka was not kicking well that year and we eventually let him go right so I I don't know I, I just can't see that that's why we lost that game. I don't know if you feel different, Justin. Uh, I'm a, I'm about in the same boat as you. I mean, there's no football game that's won or lost on any one play. Um, I've never really been the one to stew too long on, you know, blaming the refs. And for me, this was kind of just like, I wish they wouldn't have even come out and said it. It was, mm-hmm. it was an old scar that was reopened and. It's not changing anything that we didn't already know. We already knew it was a bad call at the time. And oh, it's yeah. kind of, uh, we're talking two years ago now. Like, we've all kind of moved on from it. We enjoyed the hell out of last season. And now we're just bringing it up again. As, uh, let it go, man. It was past. Right. Yeah. As far as the draft hats go, uh, these ones coming out this year, not my favorite. But for anybody watching with video, um, they're still a hell of a lot better than these. Uh, if you're listening on audio platforms, I got the Stars and Lightning Stripe Draft they had sitting next to me. Oh, um, it's really just here for decor purposes. I, I think I've only worn that hat one time. Yeah, those that hat, I think that was the year that Ed Oliver was drafted, right? I, I honestly look at that draft hat and thought a kid in like the first grade just kind of did clip art on the brim of the hat. I was like, yeah, that looks good. You know what I'd rather see than that hat? What's that? As the, uh, remember that segment they did where they had draft picks drawing the team's logo from memory and Josh Allen drew that Buffalo? I want that on a draft hat. Yeah, I definitely would take that. I would wear that over this. Oh, yeah, yeah. And my, I really don't like the 2021 draft hat. It just, it just looks kind of, bland like you know it doesn't do anything for me so i'm I'm good without it (laughs) all right so i think that's going to wrap it up for this week's news update let's go right into our combine results but first let me preface this by saying we are not professional athletes and we did not perform like them whatsoever so if you're expecting justin or i or our executive producer jake to run a 422 that's just not happening uh, I don't suspect any of you thought that would happen. Anyway. Look at that Combine football. To you by the Wandering Buffalo Podcast, Who is that guy right there? Are gonna deliver you Dang, I would draft him. Throw that ball a quarter mile. <laughs> Look at this fly route. I draft this guy That's too. Touchdown. Oh. I take it back. My, my ideal goal would be to be sub five. Uh, realistically, wait. I'd like to be sub five. Got to shut off all the weight, I'm Justin. I see you five taking five. off all the clothes. I you got to cut down that. on the drag. <laughs> Definitely. I think you said you were entering in as a cornerback. Who is that person in the uh, background just recording us? Andrew. Oh, that's Claire. Who <laughs> do you think you're running today? Best case scenario, four eight. Four eight. Leanne looked at me and was like, no, you're not. She doesn't believe you. <laughs> it's a bad start. It could have been better, definitely. But I think we had it didn't get some technical difficulties, so that was your third time running it. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> I wish I got off better. <laughs> you stood straight up was the problem. I know. That felt sub five. What a mistake. Uh, We're gonna train that out of you. Jake, Jake showing us how it's really done. 
at the beginning. <laughs> Undrafted free agent, potentially. Finish strong. I love that tune. Easter Bunny Whew. coming through. Sheesh. He got the bungees. I don't need. How do you guys even know where to start with how far I jumped? We lined up with that hash. My nose went out farther than my feet. <laughs> you you always record from the farthest uh, spot five, behind you. And three, five, five, Just five. give me five and a half. Just five, five and a half. How do you feel, five, Justin? Five, Woo! <laughs> hey, he's got all this technique I didn't know about. Good one. <laughs> well, I I did do track in high school, so I had that leg up on you guys. Let's go. Jake's got some athleticism, man. I'm telling you. Coming in, getting the official measuring. With our official measuring sticks. Very official. Super. How do you feel about that, Jake? <laughs> I don't know how we forgot a measuring stick. Good. <laughs> Posterized. Bam! Layup. Ah! So excited about 14 inches. Jake had up there too. That one looked pretty good. How do you feel, Jake? Pretty good. Jake, That's way less perfect. hype though. Submitted 125, which is 100 less than the combine weight. One time, we're going to try 135. One time. <laughs> Three, two, one. My lovely apartment again. with Come the combine on. weights. Let's go. Very Jesus cold. Christ, I'm weak. He got it, boys. Uh, uh, 135. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 135. What time? <laughs> Alright, This might have been a mistake. Oh, God, no. <laughs> This was 100% a mistake. As soon as I dropped it down, oh, I was like, oh! We got like, zero reps. Zero reps. <laughs> He's not helping much. Jesus Christ. That's heavy, though. That like that right. is like very heavy. For the content, right? Yeah, that wasn't great. What's your goal? Well, I mean, I if I you don't do work out, like, on a normal day. 135's heavy. So, you know, just straight up. My max is like around a 6, so... Well, I got you gotta check the six. text real quick. I feel like maybe I'll get five, realistically. Just remember that I'm here to save your life, so I don't go too hard because I'm... <laughs> Christian McCaffrey got ten. So if I can get half of Christian McCaffrey, that'd be, I'm just Christian. That'd be a good <laughs> So stupid. <laughs> I'm like going through the shades of red on my face. Every rep's redder. <laughs> Great form, though. <laughs> Thanks, man. One more for Christian McCaffrey. Let's go. One more. I. You know what? I. I swore oh, you man. helped me on that. Maybe the tenth one, bro. I don't know. Pause it right there, Jake. If you watch, you watch that all the way through your whole set. My face doesn't change at all. I'm not doing anything to help you. My hands are just there in case. Well, I... How's your lifeguard? Hey, you know, I don't know. It might be like a psychological thing because when, when I'm like benching and I know someone's there, I'm, I'm more willing to push the envelope because I know someone's not going to let me die unless... You know, yeah, terrible. if you started dying, I'd find the strength to lift that. I just can't do it on my own. Either that or all, like, 100 pounds of Claire would come over and just rip that <laughs> shit off me. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know, man. She, she's strong. Huh? All right, well, all in all, I had a great time recording this episode. Uh, it just shows me that, honestly, Justin, I can't really look at anyone on the football field and go, like, 
I'm probably faster than you or stronger than you or, you know, can jump farther than you or just... I'd catch that ball. I'm ex- more explosive, like, because I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I thought, you know, maybe I could find in my prime athletic life, maybe I could do something, but it's just clear I, I, I can't. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm calling this one the Armchair Olympics. <laughs> You know, we make it very clear on our show, and this is just kind of the portrayal of it. Like, we're not professional athletes. We're not professional podcasters. We're just a couple dudes that love football and kind of why we wanted to put on this little event just to kind of make light of, you know, where we are athletically and all that. But it doesn't stop you from being able to love the game. Yeah, well said, Justin. I I, I would agree, and... It just makes me appreciate the players that much more. And why I'm not going to complain if someone drops a pass as much as I used to (laughs) or something like that. All right, well, uh, that's going to do it for the Combine episode. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. We're going to start with the 40-yard dash, everyone's favorite event. The fastest person to run it in the 2020 Combine was Henry Ruggs III, wide receiver, at 4.27 seconds. That puts him in the 99.4 percent tile. That's insane. The slowest to do it at the 2020 Combine, Trey Adams, an offensive tackle, at 5.6 seconds. That puts him at the 5.9 percent tile. That's real bad. And if you don't know, Trey Adams is an undrafted free agent signed to the Buffalo Bills practice squad. Let's go. Let's go. go. All right, so let's transition to our times. So I guess we'll start with me here. I ran it in, drum roll please, 5.04 seconds. (laughs) Expectable. You know, I thought I was going to run it a little bit faster, but maybe... I, maybe I'm just not as quick as I used to be. <laughs> I I ran it just as fast as A.J. Epinesa, though. A defensive end for the Bills, except the only difference between me and A.J. Epinesa is that he has exactly 100 pounds on me. So the, I weigh 175, he weighs 275 pounds, and we run just as fast. So in my mind, I'm just like, wow, that's insane. <laughs> but A.J. Epinesa ran and ran his 40 and it put him in the 17.3 percentile so not great <laughs> all right let's transition to jake's 40 yard dash time jake ran it drummo 5.34 seconds that's exactly the same as keith is a center for the washington football team and that man weighs at 309 pounds <laughs> It's a lot more weight to carry around than uh, Jake probably toting about what, yeah. 130, 140. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's it's a little bit of a difference. But uh, Keith Ismail ran at the 33.5 percentile for centers. So not too bad, I guess. Last but not least, we have Justin's 40-yard time. Justin. Justin, Justin, Justin ran his 40-yard time in 6.14 seconds. Let's go. The closest time to you was Trey Adams, the offensive tackle for the Buffalo Bills at 318 pounds. After doing some math and conversion, I'd say you're about 3%. You're at the third percentile for offensive tackles. So Severely undersized. You're not last, though. So think about that. That's true. All right, let's yeah, for for some context on mine, I you did a great job with like lining these up with uh, mm-hmm. last year's combine numbers. Mm-hmm. Um, so the one that kept popping into my head was Vince Wilferk, and I'm like, that man was an absolute just huge unit. Oh, and yeah. I was just kind of curious, you know, what did, what did he run for a forty? Do you know what he ran? I don't know off the top of my head. Care to guess? <sighs> I'm gonna say a four six five. Uh, he was uh five oh eight. Never mind. 
<laughs> yeah, but I mean, still in perspective, you know, that I'm barely faster than him. That guy's about three of me and runs significantly faster than me. Yeah, wow. Wow. Yeah. Well, let's move on to the broad jump. Hopefully we uh, performed a little better there. <laughs> So the longest broad jump at the 2020 Combine was Donovan's Peoples-Jones, a wide receiver at 139 inches. That's 99.8 percentile. The shortest at the 2020 Combine, you guessed it, Justin, Trey Adams, offensive tackle for the Bills at 92 inches. Puts him at the, yeah, he puts him at the 7.8 percentile, and that's real bad. Real, real bad. Let's look at what I did. I had 106 inches on my broad jump, which I thought was okay. It's exactly the same as Colton McGivitz, an offensive tackle for the 49ers, but he weighs 306 pounds. But for an offensive tackle, that would put me in the 70.8 percentile. <laughs> so all in all, I wasn't too uh, you know disappointed with that. I thought I could jump. A little bit further I guess not my track days might be a little behind me but let's see what Jake did Jake had a 86.5 inch broad jump the same as Orlando Brown well maybe not the same Orlando Brown actually was a little worse at 82 inches but that was the closest person to them to his results as we know Orlando Brown is the offensive tackle for the Ravens at 345 pounds Jake's got like four and a half inches on him, but Orlando Brown, he's at the point seven percentile for offensive tackles. So, I, I mean, I guess that would put Jake at like, what, one, two percent? What do you think, Justin? Something like that. Something close. I know who's at the point one percentile. <laughs> well, well uh, maybe I can uh, put you there. So, Justin, you know your uh, broad jump, 65.5 inches. Again, the closest person to you was Orlando Brown at 82 inches. Orlando Brown has 16.5 inches on you. I, I, Yeah, so you're probably at the .1 percentile for offensive tackles. Yeah, we're lacking in some of the explosive athleticism I learned. <laughs> It could be worse. It could be worse. You weren't the slowest out on the um, 40 yard, so it's all good. Think about it like that. All right. Only room to go up. Right. That's true. Let's transition to the vertical jump. So, the highest at the 2020 combine, Donovan's Peoples Jones at 44 and a half inches. That again puts him at the 99.8 percentile. Pretty crazy. He's literally at the top at two categories. Pretty explosive wide receiver there. The lowest, again, Trey Adams at 24.5 inches. That puts him surprisingly at uh, the 15.6 percentile for offensive tackles. So, Trey Adams, you're rolling along at the low ends, and Donovan Peoples-Jones is slowly creeping up at the top. <laughs> so, vertical, vertical jump for me, I had 34 inches. That is exactly the same as Uter Gross Matos, the defensive end that was drafted for the Carolina Panthers, except he has 100 pounds on me. <laughs> so it just seems like in order for me to be in the NFL, I have to keep my athleticism but put on 100 pounds. I don't know if that's going to happen, Justin. <laughs> but Uter Gross Matos, we'll see. He, got, he, he jumped at the 69.7 percentile for defensive ends. So, again, i got to put on that good weight. Jake jumped at 21 inches. The closest person to him was Trey Adams at 24.5 inches. Again, Trey Adams weighs 316 pounds. So that means Trey Adams, the worst person at that combine, has 3.5 inches on Jake's vertical. So after some math and conversion, Justin, Jake is at the 13.3 three seven percentile out of a hundred for offensive tackles what do you think about that i don't think he'd be a very good left tackle in the league <laughs> but he might be a good right tackle maybe 
<laughs> Doesn't quite have the foot speed for the left side. Right, right. Definitely not. All right, Justin, we're going to we're going to close things out on uh, the vertical with you. You had a 14-inch vertical. Again, the closest person to you was Trey Adams at 24.5 inches. That means he's got 10 and a half inches on you, Justin. Yeah, I mean, it's basically doubled up <laughs> Yeah, for all intents and purposes. I think what I got most out of this segment is we need to get this dude Trey Adams on the show. Yeah. I got to talk to him about some combine performances how to boost up my numbers a little bit i'm just trying to think because i thought i was like you know relatively athletic kind of dude and i i you know nfl kind of put the man on blast when i was like looking up combine results because they in most categories it was like trey adams last 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 but he's literally a significantly better athlete than all of us (laughs) like just crazy yeah so i i can't i can't even believe it Anyways, Justin. Yeah, I was a. Oh, go ahead. I was a little bit further out of uh, out of my prime than I expected. You know, I didn't expect to come in and run a four or five forty, but I wasn't expecting six one. So right. I'm gonna have to get back in the weight room. Right. Well, uh, your vertical puts you at eight point nine percentile out of a hundred. So not it's not last. Not last. There we go. Let's transition to the last event, the 225 bench press. The highest at the 2020 Combine, Nitain Muti, a guard at 44 reps. That puts him at the 99.8 percentile. And the lowest was Chris Finke, a wide receiver at 7 reps. And that puts him at uh, the 4.2 percentile. So not great. Justin and Jake had 0 reps at 225 pounds. Although Justin, you did do one rep at 135, so that's 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 impressive. A lot of people look out. If you don't work out, doing 135, that's like 45 is on each plate. That's that's kind of a hard thing to walk into and just like pick up and just throw it up. <laughs> yeah, that's that's easily the first time I benched in two three years. I don't know. Yeah, so honestly, I I wasn't sure if you were gonna get it up at all but you, you got it up so i right, kudos to you seriously that that, the, that takes the a 225 lot. tried to kill me that wasn't a great idea <laughs> <laughs> i wanted you to do it so bad um, it would have been amazing yeah so i guess we'll kind of wrap up the combine results here with my bench press i had 10 reps that was exactly the same as christian mccaffrey and Lamar Jackson, not the quarterback, but the cornerback for the Jets. And if you're going to compare me to him, he ranked 17.2% out of 100% of for the cornerback. So he's at the 17th percentile, which is, I guess, where I would be if I entered a cornerback. So all in all, I thought I would have been a lot lower on the totem bowl. But I thought 10 reps was a lot. In the combine, it, it just shows you that these athletes can just literally move mountains like nothing. Ten reps only puts me at the 17th percentile. Like what? Like you're crazy. I don't know. That's just that's just a lot. All in all, I don't understand how we're not first round picks, Justin. How do you feel? So, um, I'm not ruling out myself as a first round pick. I'm gonna do well in the really in the the intangible aspects i'm gonna be a great pre-draft visit all that i'll bring coffee we're gonna make it happen still right i think if i need to get into the nfl it's clear i have to put on a hundred pounds and keep my athleticism and enter as either an offensive like guard or whatever or a defensive end because that's just the only way it's happening i guess uh, I don't. I don't really know what Jake would enter in, but maybe he'll enter as a right tackle, as we alluded to uh, earlier. Water boy. Yeah, water boy. I could do that. <laughs> all right. Well, yeah. All the all the jokes aside, I I, I think we really wanted to do um, this kind of exercise for you know we know that we're sitting behind the computer judging these people with gifts that we can only dream of having. Um, so I think it's kind of fun to just put like the actual perspective on it and 
just be honest with where we stand as athletes, mm-hmm. and that doesn't mean that we can't talk about these players. We're very honest with ourselves on where where we're at. Yeah, well said. Very well said, Justin. And I just had so much fun actually doing these events with uh, with you two. Obviously, it it was just so much fun. We went out there to my to a, my high school, and we just did the drills. And yeah, we're gonna have to do this Rich Eisen style and do it once a year. Oh God, yeah, it's gonna. I'm gonna see myself like fall off a cliff. <laughs> that's okay though. All right, well, that's gonna wrap it up for the Average Joe's Combine results. We're gonna take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone, and we're gonna pick things right off with our mock draft mayhem. We're going to start off with my mock draft, and I used Pro Football Focuses. And I understand we're not a fan of Pro Football Focuses, Bills fan, because of all the hate that they used for Josh Allen, at least early on in his career. But what I'm, the reason why I picked Pro Football Focused was because they gave us a grade, and it for me that helped me kind of use a point of reference to understand where I felt according to their baseline. So that's the reason why I used Pro Football Focus. So in the first round, at pick 30, I took wide receiver Elijah Moore out of Old Miss. The reason why I picked him was because the Bills need to keep their strengths strengths. I think it knocks two birds with one stone. By drafting Moore, you get an impact player that can not only help your team right now, but you can also invest in your future because Cole Beasley isn't getting any younger and he's done after 2022 and you got to consider this and I think the Bills should. He's got that shake, that cut in and cut out move that we see Beasley do in the slot all the time. I saw that on his highlight highlight tape, so that was really cool. And I also saw that he runs some jet sweeps. So again, that Isaiah McKenzie, maybe you kind of smush Isaiah, Cole Beasley together, boom, you get Elijah Moore. So I wouldn't be upset about that. He can also return punts, super nice, and he can line up on the outside as well as the inside, and he doesn't have a problem with catching the ball in traffic. PFF gave me an A-, I was very happy with it. Uh, Moving on to my second pick at 61, in the second round, I took cornerback Ifietu Melifanwu out of Syracuse. He's lengthy. Right, Justin, I love how lengthy he is. He should be good at the catch point. He has some press man coverage ability, but he's best suited, allegedly, for a zone-based scheme. So that's perfect for us, right? (laughs) He's great against the run. There's been a lot of chatter about this man amongst Bills Mafia, and I understand why. He's a good fit for the Bills, which is important. PFF gave me... A B plus for this, Justin. Moving on to my third pick, Hamsa Nasiruladin. Safety out of Florida State. He's versatile and he can be positionless. Think about that Buffalo nickel, a.k.a. the tight end eraser. He's got that rare athleticism that allows him to be almost like a Swiss Army knife. What we need for the defense. My only concern with them is that he had that ACL tear in the past that you can't really ignore those, Justin. It's kind of scary. Uh, he needs to work on his ball skills, working as a traditional high safety, a.k.a. what Mike High does, and he needs to work on his blitzing. If he can put all that together, we got us a solid pick and maybe a steal in the draft. PFF gave me a B plus. Now moving on to my fifth round pick, I took Deontay Smith, a tackle out of East Carolina. This man is very lean. Very, very lean, Justin. He's athletic. He's got good mobility, hands, and and length. You can always use depth at tackle, and if it doesn't work out, just kick him inside. That's what they usually do anyway, right? If it doesn't work out. He needs to put on more weight, but the good kind of weight. So when he does that, he needs to work on his body control, his contact balance, and his strength. He can develop, but he needs, like, time and work. 
that he'll probably reach a ceiling around year three, and he's best suited for West Coast offenses. So timing based and typically quick passes. So not great for long developing pass plays. So maybe not super good for what the Bills do, but he's best suited for zone blocking run schemes, which is what it seems like the Bills are migrating to. PFF gave me a B plus for this pick. For the fifth round, I picked Kyrus Tonga, a defense interior lineman out of BYU. He accelerates at run defense, which the Bills could be better with and definitely could use a hand. <laughs> um, when, in, when he's on a, a good pad level with opposing linemen, he's difficult to guard 1v1. He needs to be more consistent, though, Justin. Stronger is probably a better way to describe him than explosive. And the reason why I drafted him is because the Bills have kind of a low-key need at defensive line that no one really talks about. Yeah, we restructured it, people, and, you know, for the most part, outside of Quentin Jefferson, we got the whole gang back, but we, we still need help there. We can always be cheaper and younger at the position, too. Plus, it offers rotation, which is what we know McDermott loves. Pro Football Focus gave me a B-plus for this. In the sixth round, I picked Patrick Jones, the second, a defensive end out of Ohio State. He's a good balanced uh, D, so he's good at run and pass defense, although he's only a 4-3 defensive end. He can't drop back into coverage. He can't kick inside. He can't stand up or do any of that other stuff. He's strictly an outside defensive end, which should be okay for the Bills. Um He's got good pass rushing. He's got a good pass rushing toolbox. He competes for gaps against run defenses. My concern with him and from all the scouting reports is that he's not super versatile and he might be too light. He needs to be he needs to put on better weight. He's inexperienced in terms of his hand usage and he doesn't have great reach. PFF gave me a C plus for this. With my last pick, I picked Larry Roundtree the third, a running back out of Missouri. He was the highest rated person on the board. I just figured, why not scoop him up? Got to got to check off that running back because we, we all know we could improve in that area too, I guess. Uh, he can take the rock over and over again. He's built for wear and tear. He creates chunk plays at a modest clip. He doesn't offer much in the passing game, though, which could be a problem. He's best suited for an inside zone, zone, gotta, gotta make sure I emphasize that, <laughs> heavy rushing attack, and could be good for end of the game situations and served as a good rotation player for run heavy plans. Either way, he's more of like a bottom rostered running back that can compete for special teams and maybe he fills out that TJ Yeldon role, minus, you know, the catching ability. <laughs> So I guess he really wouldn't be that. All, but PFF gave me a B plus. Overall, I'd say I was happy with my draft. Most of my draft notes I took from a synopsis from the Draft Network and from Pro Football Focus. So I read both reports on each of the players that I drafted and kind of put my own thoughts after watching their tapes. And that's where I came up with all my picks and my analysis of it. Overall, PFF gave me a B plus, so I was very okay with it. Justin, how do you feel about it? Yeah, so there's a few things in this draft that I really like, and there's a few things that you kind of touched on, on specifically like your fifth round picks and on about you know some of the things that they need to get more consistent with and where they can develop and all that, and. That's kind of the beauty of where we're drafting um, because those those fifth-round picks are kind of designated to be developmental players anyways. You know, you're not often getting a Matt Milano, you know, ready to start year one from round five. Um, kind of your description of your draft as well kind of made me think of, I don't know if you've heard, if you heard this show from Bruce Nolan this week on the Bruce Exclusive um, where he was kind of talking about needs, um, 
different levels of needs of like, yeah, you know, maybe we could upgrade cornerback to this year. Um, but, you know, people aren't talking about defensive tackle being in need. Well, you know, you're assuming that Ed Oliver is going to take the next step. Um, we're not sure about Harrison Phillips. His contract's about to be up. You know, you don't really know what you're getting in Star Latulale coming back off of opting out. So it's just different levels of needs. Um, I will say Elijah Moore at the top of the draft. Um, so to me, I really love Elijah Moore as a player. Um, and I do think the Bills are going to add a receiver or two. Um, you talked a little bit about Beasley's getting a little bit older. Unfortunately, we don't get to keep him forever, despite me wanting mm-hmm. to. Um, and then you also have Isaiah McKenzie's back on a one-year contract. I'd say he's far from a lock to make the team. Um, you have Emmanuel Sanders, 34 years old, playing on a one-year contract. He's probably not back next year. Um, so, you know, we do have Isaiah Hodgins in the building, um, but we didn't really get to see him last year. So right. I like the idea of, you know, being said, keeping the fastball um, and investing in that spot. And for me, if we're going if we're going offensive weapon at 30, I'd rather have it be a high-end receiver than the running back pick um, just because I think – they're able to affect your team so much more on positive ways. Um, Melifonwu, I'll keep it short on him. We all know how I feel about him. Uh, if mm-hmm. we if we get him at 61, I'll be to the moon. Um, Nasser Al Dean, he's my dream scenario. If if we can't get a Wusu Koromo round one, and then I think uh, Patrick Jones in the later rounds. Um, I think he's a great developmental edge. Um, He doesn't have to fill an immediate role. Um, We have the pieces in front of him for the next year or two. Um, Mm -hmm. So overall, I I was a pretty big fan of your draft. Thank you. Well, Justin, I'll I'll hand the reins over. Why don't you tell us what you did? All right, so um, I went a little different route. I used the draft network. Um, I think it was kind of nice seeing different ways the draft shook out. Um, so I, I went with the draft network for mine. Um, I've done probably hundreds of mock drafts at this point. Honestly, this one wasn't my favorite one I ever put together, but we kind of decided we're doing this one, submit it. Um, but I, in hindsight, looking at it, I like the way it shook out. It's just not necessarily the way I thought it was going to go, which I think is interesting. Um, So the first pick at 30, I have Caleb Farley. Um, So this is the kind of guy that's probably just maybe altogether taken off of teams uh, first round board. Um, Reason being, he's got some some scary medicals. Um, He's going to be entering the league. Um, He had a non-contact ACL injury, and he's had two different back surgeries. Um, before entering the NFL. Um, But for me, I think this guy would easily be the number one cornerback on most teams' boards without that. Um, You're talking a top 10 pick if he were, you know, to not have those injuries. So this one I'm going to kind of trust the medical staff on. If they tell me he's he's clear, I'm going to take their word for it. But the the guy, you're talking a 4-2-7-40, He'll play man. He'll play zone. It's just that elite cornerback opposite of Trey, um, which I I would just absolutely love to see that pairing. Right. Uh, At 61, I picked up Davion Nixon, um, interior defensive lineman. The way it was shaking out, I kind of um, prioritized this pick a little bit higher um, because I didn't want to deny the player there. Um, so all the things I kind of touched on before with the depth piece, but I'm looking for the next step from Ed Oliver with Davion Nixon next to him. I want to watch those two rec games together as a pair. Mm -hmm. Um, swinging back to 93, uh, I took Quincy Roche, um, edge rusher. Uh, I think he has a lot of physical tools. 
Um, again, at, at 93, you can give him that year or two to really develop into himself as he's adjusting to the NFL level. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, of Jerry Hughes, Mario Addison this year, uh, AJ Epinesa, we're hoping takes the next step. And I'm kind of looking for Epinesa and Roche to be kind of running mates for the foreseeable future. Um, you couple that with Ed Oliver taking a next step, hopefully Davion Nixon stepping in and making an impact, and all of a sudden you have an absurd front four. So that's why I went that way. Um, 161, my guy, Javion Hawkins. Um, I feel like I went a little bit high for him in this draft, but he's kind of an interesting player. Um, between the different mock drafts sites and different drafts I've done, I've seen him go anywhere from like late fourth round to like early seventh round. Um, in this situation, the way the way I was drafting, I wanted to pick up a running back that has that elite speed advantage. Um, his tape is super fun to watch. I think he could be like that true. RB3 for us that will get out and catch passes, can can get to the edge, really shake some people with speed. Um, so, Javion Hawkins is in the building. Uh, 174, uh, Shakur Brown. Um, not the guy I know the most about, but I've heard his name a lot brought up and linked to the Bills. Um, with taking Caleb Farley at 30, um, I'm... I'm with Bruce Nolan. I think you you can never have too many good cornerbacks. Um, and I think this kind of gives him a chance to get into the league and develop. This, you know, tail end of the draft here is likely going to be bottom of the roster, maybe practice squad players. Um, mm-hmm. So for me, this is kind of about getting people with some traits that you like. And this is kind of more like a pre-draft for for next year and get some guys in the building that you like. Mm -hmm. Um, 213, Cornell Powell, wide receiver out of Clemson. Um, This is a guy, I I really like his ball skills, um, aggressive at the the catch point. Um, He had a very quiet first couple of years, and last night he, or last year, he really burst onto the scene, put up some really good numbers. Um, A lot of people... You know, linking that to, well, Trevor Lawrence is throwing him the ball. Um, there was a five-game stretch where it, it wasn't Trevor Lawrence, and he was he was still balling. Um, so, again, 213, take a chance on a receiver. Um, see how your depth chart starts shaking out down the road. Um, 236, dipping back into wide receiver with Jalen Darden. Um I've watched this guy's highlight reel so many times. Uh, he's so much fun. Now, he's 5'9 and 170 pounds. Um, so th- this is kind of, I feel like he would be way higher on a lot of people's boards if he if he was a little bit bigger. Maybe he can put on some weight if you give him a little time. Um, but he's super twitchy as a slot receiver. Um Jet motions, bubble screens. Mm-hmm. Um, he's he's done returns. I I kind of look at this as worst case scenario. He's Ray Ray McLeod, and you know Ray Ray didn't stick around too long, but he was a sixth round pick that couldn't make our roster. And I mean he's he's still playing in the NFL right now. So if your seventh round pick worst case scenario is Ray Ray McLeod, I don't hate it, but I think he has a chance to be. Are a really special extra player on the team, right? And that's uh, that's where I'm at. I didn't get a grade from mine. Well, how do you feel that you did? Uh, so, like... I, so I I feel like this really ended up working out pretty well for me. Mm-hmm. Um, the interesting thing is, it for me it really shows you kind of where the board takes you. Um, so my overall draft strategy is an edge defender at 30 and then swinging back at 61 for the cornerback. I think it's a pretty deep cornerback draft and 
not so much at edge. Mm-hmm. I think you kind of have like your high level edge players and then the developmentals and like right. rounds three through seven, depending on how much developing you want to do. Um, but I think this draft I had sitting on the board was like um, the guy out of Penn State, um, Owe. Owe, Owe, yeah. Yeah, and Gregory Rousseau. And my my whole plan going into this was I was going to address Edge in the first round, and Caleb Farley sitting there, I just couldn't deny the talent. And, right. you know, at 93 we end up with Quincy Roche. And I think he's going to be a, a good player too. So, yeah, it's just interesting seeing how how the draft takes you, and you got to kind of saddle up and go for the ride. Right. So it sounds like you went into the draft with a plan, but that plan quickly changed as the board fell to you. But all in all, in all it sounds like you're relatively happy with your results. And I'll make my comments on it real quick. I like the Caleb Farley pick. If he reaches his ceiling, we're talking about elite corners locking down the secondary next to one of the like NFL's best safety tandems. So that secondary is primo if we if that can be achieved. I love the interior defensive lining pick because I, again I I picked up someone to shore up that defensive line, keep that rotation strong. Quincy Roche, I know you have affinity for this man, and he he looks like he, according to the draft network, he was the 78th ranked player, and you got him at 93, so I think that's really good value on your part, and you also got really good value on Caleb Farley. He was the 7th on the draft network's board, so you did a really good job in that aspect, where I think that, you know, maybe you could have done better was Javion Hawkins. Don't do it to me. He he was ranked the 230th player on the draft network, and you picked him up at 161. I get where you're coming from, though. I when I did some mock drafts, he was kind of going in that fifth, sixth, seventh range. I didn't really I I wasn't invested on picking a running back until like sixth or seventh, and clearly I got the bottom of the barrel when when my draft came around. So I was I I I didn't love this pick too much, but. I, I know why you certainly do. Uh, I like the wide receiver uh, picks that you picked. <clears throat> Excuse me. Pretty much back-to-back, back if you think about it. They're both, both ranked around the 190 range, but you got them in like the mid-230s. So that's pretty good in my opinion. And, of course, I like the depth at the cornerback. Just like you said, or rather Bruce said, you can never have too much depth at the cornerback. And I agree. Keep your strengths, strengths, right? So overall, Justin, I really liked your draft. I liked the direction that you were heading to. And when I saw it, and when you were explaining to me how the board felt, it just made sense to me and why you picked each one. Except for the Javion Hawkins. <laughs> you know? Javion Hawkins are bust. I got an asterisk right right over that man's. It, I don't care. You knew I was going to come on this show and draft Javion Hawkins. I, I knew it. I honestly did. But I... I you know, I don't know. I don't know what I was The expecting. fans would have been let down if I didn't take JV on Hawkins. <laughs> right. Right. All right. Well, I think that's going to wrap it up for this week's episode. We had so much fun doing the mock draft and the combine, the average Joe's combine, rather. So next week, we're going to get a little creative. We're going to do our Six Degrees episode. Uh, well, if you don't know what the Six Degrees is, tune in next week. We'll explain it. It's pretty fun. Go ahead and subscribe, like, comment, and review our podcast. It would be greatly appreciated. We're always looking for guests on the show. So just reach out to us on social media platforms if you're interested by searching The Wandering Buffalo Podcast. Justin, where can the people find you? You can find me on social medias at jgods22. Um, If anybody else is out there doing mock drafts, Send them my way. Send them to uh, the Wandering Buffalo pages. Um, maybe we'll take a look at them on the show and see what, see what we think about your drafts. I'm always interested in seeing what other people are thinking. Yeah, I, that, I think that'd be a really good opportunity because, let, let's be honest, no one thinks the same or people only think similar, right? 
So if you have a different draft in mind or you got a different direction, let's talk about it. I'd, I'd be interested in figuring out why you picked that certain player or why you addressed this position at that time. Anyways, you can find me on social media, at, on most social media rather, sorry, at 2 Changs. But other than that, I think that's going to wrap it up for tonight's episode. Justin, got anything else you want to say tonight? Uh, go Bills. Go Bills. See you next week. <laughs>